Okay. Recording has now started. Okay, welcome to the virtual interim of the W3C WebRTC Working Group. <laughs> this group abides by the W3C patent policy and only people and companies listed on the link shown are allowed to make substantive contributions to the WebRTC specs. So the goal of today's meeting is to make progress on really w WebRTC testing, uh, and then the rest of the meeting will be devoted to privacy concerns and a potential extension to WebRTC PC. Okay, some basic information on the meeting is up on the wiki. Um, we published a link to the slides. Uh, will anyone volunteer to scribe? Do we have a scribe? I can scribe. Okay, thank you, Henrik. Uh, you don't have to uh, get everything, just the major decisions. All right. Um, and then the meeting is being recorded, as Harold said. So here's what we're going to do today. Um, we have issue 2412, which is about the testing policy, um, and then a whole bunch of uh, issues, privacy issues from media capture and streams. Um, actually, a few are, are not privacy. Um, and then Harold will talk about a potential extension to WebRTC PC. Okay, so uh, first we'll talk about the testing policy and where we are. So if you, I'm just going to, going to be, uh, give a little background. So we decided some time ago that uh, we would aim for, whenever we updated the spec, we would also change the tests to test the new behavior. This is behavior, this is something that has been uh, mandated by other working groups in the WGC and what WG and uh, met with some success there. At least that's what they claim. So what's been happening instead is that, well, people have been making changes to the spec, either clarifications or extensions or really pointing out what, needed, what the spec needed to say. And then, Nobody's done anything more about it until someone, possibly the same person, but uh, possibly six months later, uh, tries to implement the spec change and writes a test as, a, as part of that implementation. That means that we have a spec that uh, doesn't conform to the tests, but we do have browsers that conform to the tests. So. We also have a backlog of the things that we put into the spec that we didn't try to test for at the time. And now we're uh, and now we're, we're we simply haven't gotten around to it. So uh, also the policy is uh, all focused around web platform tests and we know from uh, from uh, experience that web platform tests can test everything and we don't we have better tools namely kite for doing things like interrupt testing but uh, we haven't gotten any policy uh, established around actually making sure kite tests are written when needed and run and looked at so 
What should we do? We have uh, seen in the past what happened when uh, tests were written before any implementation, and uh, it you basically failed a lot of things. It was it was not you had to update the, all of them anyway. I think right, right. I, I think if if it's a matter of tracking which features need to be uh, implemented, it it would be a better policy to say file a bug on browsers. Right. Like if you if you want really good test coverage, that's that's in my experience only happening when someone digs down uh, and and starts implementing the things and think about all the <coughs> edge cases. It, it really depends on uh, the actual uh, bug, but it's fixed. Uh, when you have like a, a big new proposal, uh, like a brand new API, uh, of course you might not have uh, all the tests, and it might be good to wait for the first implementation. Uh, but when it's like uh, a bug fix, uh, we a small change, uh, we, we should have a WPT issue and we should have a, a test and we should only merge a change when there's a WPT uh, uh, yeah. test. So, so we should, I think, uh, improve our triage uh, of when a PR uh, requires a, a test, a WP test, and when it does not, and when a WP test is easy to write and is needed, we, we should not merge until we have it. Yeah. Um, I guess a question I would have is, uh, have do we fully understand what's missing um, and what we need to do? Um, and it, do, my basic question is, do we know where we are and where the biggest holes are? Because obviously we, we don't have, uh, we just, you know, are in the process of, we either have finished the final CR or are about to do so. So at least we have a spec. Um, and I guess the question is, do, do we have the data at least to give a true picture of where, um, of where we are? I guess if my question is if if we're trying to do better, I guess the first question is, do we know where we're where our biggest failing is? <laughs> yeah, that's a good question. Don, welcome. You've been uh, trying to write an interop report. Do you have an, do you have a feeling for? Uh, do you have a feeling for what the test coverage is? Or where, where we are, our current failures in test coverage are? Um, not off the top of my head, uh, but uh, we do have tooling to get uh, that picture out. Um, that being said, my impression when I looked at this is the main roadblock is more on getting WPT reviews uh, done in a timely manner uh, more than in producing tests per se. Mm. Most, most tests are produced by, by the browsers and then imported through the import. Well, right. This one are automatically blessed, so this one are okay. Uh, but uh, ones that are not produced by uh, browser vendors tend to get stuck in the review queue for a very long time. Very long I, time, I think, right? We see that. I think this is a good point: is that there are basically two paths to writing a web platform test. And so if so, there's incent. So if you write your web platform test first, uh, you're going to get stuck in review for many months. If you implement it. Uh, then you have the blessing of pushing it directly through the browser stacks. So, um, and I have seen people write uh, web, plat web platform tests as Chrome commit commits right. without any anything but the web platform tests, just because it's easier to do that way. Right. <laughs> <laughs> that, yeah. that, that tells a lot. <laughs> yeah. So it's tricky because uh, when you have an implementation, it's probably more likely to be correct. So you don't need a review. But if you're, <laughs> yeah. I, I will say that uh, for uh, some of the latest features we added, uh, 
there was uh, for even for perfect negotiation, uh, there was uh, uh, one feature where I forget which one where Chrome <clears throat> had implemented it before we did, and it was tremendously helpful to already have the web platform tests, so that when uh, you can uh, write your implementation towards. So, but but in that case, Yanivar, right? We did have at least Ms. at least Firefox that would pass the test, right? Yes. Uh, well, uh, yeah, and yes. But uh, there was one case where uh, Chrome had the feature first, and that was helpful as well. So okay. tests up front are helpful if they are correct. So therein lies the rub, I think. I think ownership is a problem. Like, um, in theory, we own it. But in practice, you know, whoever implements a feature takes ownership. That's when you see these good tests. Uh, right. And that's where you see the, you know, Things getting stuck in review is because there's nobody actively looking at these things. Yeah. So I mean, if if we, like, I think that's reality. I think if if we, we need either need to have resources for this, or we need to you know force ourselves to do this by having a policy like don't merge unless you have a PR. Uh, because if if <laughs> we don't have to do it, we won't do it. I think experience shows. Yeah. I mean. Uh, certainly at this point, because we're either have a final CR or about to have one, we can certainly do the no test, no merge policy, um, at least to avoid piling up more debt. Um, I guess my question is, is there something we can do with Dom uh, around the interop report to try to get a clear picture of where we most need the help? Because uh, if we're going to ask for resources, we need to be clear what we're asking for. Um, so uh, uh, I'm happy to take an action to uh, provide uh, a map of where our test gaps are from at least uh, the current annotations in the spec. Uh, but only if we think this will have an impact. We're not, we're not looking for well, or make it work. Um, I, I think it's helpful to at least know. I mean, some things are obvious. Other things. Like for example, we discovered that we didn't really test degradation preference, even though we had a test for it. Um, as a result of a comment from Jan Ivar about content hints, we realized we had the same problem somewhere else. Um, so I guess one thing I, I, I can volunteer to do is to actually look at the tests we have. Um, I think you, in some cases you actually need to review the test code to understand what the stuff is really doing and what it's missing. Um, so I, I'm willing to do that and at least provide an opinion on where I think our coverage gaps are, which we can argue about. Um, so maybe that's a start. Um, the other thing is I'm wondering, I mean, we have these kite tests. Are we, are we, is that part of the interop report, Dom? Uh, for the interop report for WebRTCPC, I've only focused on WPT. Um, I think for yeah. stats, uh, getting kite results would be extremely helpful, but I don't know. Um, Dom, but, where do you get your results for the mobile browsers? I'm not getting results from the mobile browsers. Do you want results for mobile browsers? And for, for again, the, from a purely formal WCC process perspective, the only thing that matters is getting double independent implementation of each feature, whether they are mobile or on desktop or anywhere else, uh, doesn't really count. Uh, of course, for real interrupt, uh, this matters. <laughs> um, but then we get out of the purely process considerations. Uh, the reason that for start, I think Kite uh, would be useful is that we would get uh, clearer pictures that the values reported by the stats have right, some right. semblance of reality. Uh, I guess yeah, I mean of that's kind of that's kind of the degradation preference problem, right? There was a test that didn't really measure anything, and so I think for stats, you really can't use WPT. Um, I mean, you, you can, but what you get out of it is not super right, powerful. Right. I, I, I would argue that testing the existence and, and compliance of the signature of the API is doable in any given case. 
but testing that in certain cases is returning the real value, especially when the network is involved or right, right. Uh, you need a different peer or you need an SFU in the, like Simulcast. We, we know since Lisbon, right, that our, the design of WPT will not allow us to do that. Right. Yeah. So I guess, uh, Dr. Alex, thank you for attending. Um, is can we? I, I think one thing to just it, it, in this process of getting an idea of where we really are, because there's no point uh, to to have an honest interop report. I mean, it, it seems like it would be useful to at least take the kite results into account. Uh, otherwise, I'm, I'm happy know, to think, to share my result with Dom, um, even if he, if only running WPT through kite, uh, even the the, the non extra one. I had put an action item on my list in Fukuoka to check with Dom the um, coverage tooling, which I haven't done, so it's my fault. So Dom, when would you have time um, to interact with me and uh, help me give you the data I might have? Uh, let, let's maybe do that offline, scheduling a... Uh... Right, okay. right. I'm thinking right. offline, but when do you plan, what, what is the timeline for you to give that into a report, for example? Um, so I get an idea when I need to, to free some of my time to make that again with the most fresh result possible. So technically, we won't move to propose recommendation until at the earliest uh, early February, uh, given that we are considering further substantive changes, it's probably going to be later than that. But I would say we probably should at least understand what it is that we would want to do uh, with Kite uh, well ahead of that, so that we don't have uh, delay once we actually need the data. All right. Um... I'm flying tomorrow, but I'll send you an email next Monday, and I'll try to get that to make proposal yeah. of things we can do quickly and fast, and I think would make sense. And then you decide if it's interesting to you or not. Right. Makes Fantastic. Yeah. Um, by the way, I would mention something, Dom, which is that um, I've been investigating all the differences between Chrome and Edge in the test results, and I found a whole bunch of uh, spurious uh, results in the interop matrix, but uh, they're relatively minor. Uh, basically, it's got to do with get user media failures. So, yeah, um, I, I had fun those, um, but in most cases, Chrome and Edge won't count as independent implementations. Uh, yeah, this new edge. But, but that's relatively minor in the scheme of things, anyway. It's like a, uh, a technical test. question for you, Dom, um, with respect to that. In the WPT, I saw some result coming from Servo and WebKit GTK. Do you count those are uh, are separate implementation in the W3C sense or not? Uh, Servo would definitely count as separate. Uh, WebKit GTK, I don't know off the top of my head. You, you and GTK. you correct me if I'm wrong, but I think the WebKit GTK doesn't have the same WebRTC stack that Safari does, right? Uh, it's partially different, right? Right, so... they're based on. Um, uh, the, 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 G streamer, while you based on LibreRTC, right? They they have two implementations. One is based on LibreRTC with a binding to G streamer, and they also have a, a prototype which is fully G streamer based. Uh, are they sharing uh, the same JavaScript binding? Uh, yeah, yeah. With Safari, right? Yes. Okay. Okay. Um, so I, uh, Henrik, I just wanted to make sure we got down the. Uh, resolutions as, as a result of this discussion. Um, so I guess the first thing is I'm not hearing any desire to abandon the testing policy. Um, and uh, basically, I heard a suggestion from UN to adopt a very strict no test, no merge policy, at least uh, well, as of final it, CR. It, it depends on what the status of the, of the spec is. Like for CR, we, are, we have like a, a very stable spec with minor changes to there, we, we should be able to to say, if we can write a test, it's not as no merge. If we cannot write a test, it's it's OK. But we, we should enforce it, yeah. For new okay. specs. Could, could we then also say that, uh, uh, also claim that we have, uh, that uh, the editors need to have merge rights on the 
WT we have repo so that we can actually merge the test anyway. Yeah. That actually that would be a good idea, wouldn't it? Yeah. yeah. Uh, so uh, for clarification, are we saying uh, no merge test, no spec merge, or are we saying no tests available as PR, uh, no merge spec? I think it would be better if we could merge them at, at the same time instead of, uh, yeah, we have a test, we'll merge it in a, in a few days. Right. <laughs> I mean, I, I don't disagree, it would be better, but um, sometimes too much coupling can also be like, you know, if there is a, a, a bug fix that the spec needs, having it yeah. uh, stalled well, but, be like but that. At, at some point, we, we're going to have a final CR, which hopefully will be a real final CR. And then, you know, that, that even that, you know, after the final CR, right, I mean, holding stuff up may be not terrible. I mean, hopefully, right, we're not, if we're holding something up that really matters, then we're not at final CR. Uh, yeah. Anyway, uh, I guess um just saying okay. that some flexibility might be another, but I won't oppose if we want to be super strict either. Yeah, I guess um, also, uh, so I, what I heard was uh, incorporating Kite into the interop report, uh, Dr. Alex working with, with Dom, um, and a review of the current tests and, and uh, where the test coverage is missing. Um, and then do we have some agreement on trying to break the bottleneck in review of issues and PRs? How we do that? Uh, could this be handled in the editor's call? Is that overloading? Well, that's what I'm thinking. That's what I'm thinking is at least once a spec moves to final CR, I mean, uh, hopefully we're not talking about a zillion changes at least for a few months. Um, so when we could start doing that in the editor's meeting. We were doing it for a while and it did seem to help. Um, I'm just thinking that we're going to get to final CR if we're not already there pretty quickly and we could spend a few months doing this, it, it might make a difference. I've, I've summarized the discussions as no desire to abandon testing policy, some desire to enforce no test, no merge, if writing tests is easy, best to merge tests and PR at the same time, but some flexibility might be in order, editors need merge rights on WPT repo, uh, we should incorporate Kite into the testing report, and editor calls should incorporate the testing PR. Fair summary? I think so. Okay, so let's um, thank you, everyone. Let's move on. Um, okay, um, so uh, now we have a bunch of issues on media <coughs> capture and streams. Um, and Jan Ivar has, is going to talk for uh, quite a while. <laughs> Turn it over to you, Jan Ivar. All right, let me get some water. <laughs> All right. <clears throat> so, yes, yeah, so the main, um, so there's a bulk of issues here. I added a couple trying to break out um, some of the concerns into multiple issues that are really solved by the same <clears throat> uh, proposal. So that's why the list uh, has grown a little bit. <clears throat> so uh, this mostly was triggered by a ping review in 2019 that raised privacy concerns. And so this is my uh, setting the stage slides of why now. <clears throat> Basically, the privacy climate has changed for uh, legitimate reasons. Websites are tracking users big time. So the uh, thinking that's mirrored by ping now is that in 2020, exposing all the users' devices beyond the one they're using is not uh, polo, not principle of least astonishment. Uh, this goes beyond fingerprinting, potentially revealing actual uh, private information users may not have intended to share about what they own and have plugged in. That might be uh, prototype devices, adult devices. And that was uh, suggested by the ping. 
and uh, that this is not the minimal information needed to achieve user goals. The next slide. So uh, the obvious solution is to put the label behind GUM permission. Uh, unfortunately, uh, <clears throat> Firefox shares all labels instead of all devices. So this change alone would actually break device selection in, Fire, uh, in Firefox. And that would force Firefox, if it wanted to be spec compliant, to grant all devices to make it work, which is worse for privacy. And it would have no beneficial impact on any other browser either. So that was not the ping's intention. So the ping clarified it wants a privacy by default flow where, uh, and this is a quote, a site asks for category or categories of device. The browser prompts the user for one, many, or all devices. Then the site gains access to only the device and label of the hardware the user selects. So this is in browser, or as we call it, in Chrome selection. And the question is, can the spec accommodate this? Uh, and um, the thinking here is that uh, if you're thinking, well, how does this work in our browser and do we have a problem? Uh, I think that's the wrong way to think about it. I think we need to think, uh, how do we make an API that works well in all browsers, whether regardless of how private their choices on privacy are? So that's the question. Uh, so that's issue number one. And there are four other, so I've broken out some other issues. So let me go through those before I jump to proposed solutions. So next slide. Uh, this brings up an existing issue that's uh, been through for a long time and that there's also no way to choose a correct camera and microphone up front. Uh, most browsers say uh, site so-and-so wants to use your camera and microphone, but it doesn't tell you which one if you have more than one. Uh, if it picks the wrong one, the user needs to correct it after the fact and also grant uh, permission, if, if uh, permission is per device, to the wrong device ahead of time. Um, this is also a web compatibility issue because browsers uh, may not choose the same device. So there's uh, three interested parties that go into the selection. It's the application uh, that can uh, influence the selection or pick it entirely based on constraints. Then there's the uh, user, which may pick in a picker, like in Firefox, or the user agent. Uh, so three people that might decide. Uh, so Firefox is the only one that I know of that shows a camera and microphone, that shows which camera and microphone will be picked, and also lets the user override that uh, within application constraints. And the way we've implemented it is that uh, the I Whatever you specify as an ideal constraint, the user may override, but it does influence what's chosen by default if you don't make an explicit selection. But they cannot go outside the constraint envelope, so it means you can't. If the application used exact device ID, for example, Firefox only prompts for that device, even though our UX in that case is a little misleading. We'd like to improve that. But not everyone with multiple devices use Firefox, so we think it would be better if users get to choose based on how many devices they have what UI they see, not based on what browser they use. And maybe even regardless of permission, because it's the app's responsibility using constraints to remember on subsequent visit what this user, uh, what devices they'd like to use. And so if a site negates that responsibility and uses indecisive constraints on a subsequent visit, uh, maybe this, the prompt would be uh, would be desirable for the subset of a population that has multiple devices. It also feels like there should be an app decision and not the trait of one browser. Next slide. <clears throat> so uh, this is sort of a minor issue, but today in Firefox, you can override its picker actually by forcing the default device by calling enumerate devices upfront and then uh, grabbing out the first device in the list of the kind you want <clears throat> and then say, I, I must want to have I want I want to have this one only, and that actually ensures the same behavior in all browsers. But we, for other privacy reasons, we recently removed device ID from enumerate, enumerate devices unless you already had GUM permission. So this no longer works. Some alternatives discussed in an issue involved standardizing a new default string that would be a stand-in for the default device in all devices. But uh, I only mention that here because there might be a, uh, we may not have to solve that. Next slide. <clears throat> so the, the fourth and final issue I'm going to talk about is in content device selection itself. 
I would argue it's uh, too complicated, not based on all the features that it offers, but has the majority of websites gotten it right in a way that works compatibly across browsers and devices? And I think the answer is no. Uh, after seven years, it's also not terribly exciting. They're very functional, and but they all look alike, and they do the same things. And um, that's fine, but it also lets weigh that against the costs. And the costs and problems are, this is the sole use case. This is the sole reason we expose labels for all devices up front and why we fail ping review. It's also uh, inherently limited by the browser's permission envelope. There's no way to ensure picking a, you can't pick a camera or microphone up front. We covered that. It's also clunky without persistent permission because most uh, web UX that I've seen sort of uh, lets you gives you a list to pick from, and then you pick it. And then if you're in Firefox, you get a permission prompt again for that device, and you basically pick it again. Uh, and it's also got pretty terrible web compatibility, uh, especially everything seems to work well in Chrome, but in Firefox, we've had a lot of issues where uh, basically every site having to write this on their own has has been a failure. And uh, I use some examples here. The WebRTC sam samples themselves, which is the example we promote for websites to use, uh, whenever you pick a camera or a microphone, it re requests both camera and microphone, which you won't notice if you have persistent permission, but in a, a browser that prompts in that case, it seems odd that it's, you know, I changed the camera and it's also asking me for my mic again. So that's wrong. And also we've seen that in production sites as well. Uh, there are some sites that uh, recently had to change their permission prompts with a new team and had a terrible time because effectively web developers end up having to program against two permission models that are quite different. And um, it's easy if you're testing on the one more permissive model that you won't catch all the problems in the other model. Um, other problems is that mobile devices usually can't open more than one device at a time, unless you have an older Android tablet uh, that, that could do that. Um, and that's actually hard to get right. It requires having to stop the previous track before you pick another which is also an inferior approach on desktop. So that's qu quite hard to get right. A few people get that right. Uh, and limited previews. Designs are inherently impeded by the browser's different permission models. So you couldn't do, you could actually do mass previews and expose, you could have a picker that uh, exposes a preview of every camera you have on your system and you could pick that way. But that's also exposes that it's actually a little creepy that the site has all that power. Uh, and an inconsistent user experience, every size it's on, is on its own to how to figure out how this interface should look. So you see from the two screenshots above, they do exactly the same thing. Um, and the ability to customize this, the potential of that hasn't really materialized in seven years. So there's no path to privacy here. So it's, this is limiting and relies on leaking labels and you can't avoid redundant prompts after selection. So next slide. So this is my pitch. In hindsight, we could have done everything in Chrome, in the browser, modeled on the success of Get Display Media. Because with Get Display Media, we went a different approach, where you always pick. And the benefits here is that it removes the needs to grant all permissions to all devices up front. And it even works up front. And you can select up front, even though you have given no permission to a site, it can still pick your camera. Uh, you can still pick between all your cameras. You can have previews that kind of thing. And um, you may not want to do previews at that point because it can still be a little jarring and scary, but that's up to browsers. Uh, on desktop, um, users can also imp implement previews safely, uh, even for cameras that aren't cho chosen. On, uh, and on mobile, the problem I mentioned earlier with different platforms can be handled by uh, more reliably by the browsers. Uh, they, could, they could do tricks like uh, temporarily mute the the um, uh, single device and uh, show a selector for other devices. And then if the user cancels out, restore the old device, stuff like that. OK, <clears throat> so now that we have, but we have in-content device selection, how can we have in Chrome as well? So the idea here is that we could have a transition period. Uh, in Chrome selection will let us uh, 
uh, put label behind gun permission. Uh, and we could have this compete in the field on merit with, uh, we could have in Chrome selection compete with in content selection, see how that goes. Um, maybe better previews, people would prefer that. Uh, in stage two, we could remove label from enumerate devices and basically deprecate in content the selection. So just to clarify, this would not change anything we, um, we have regarding to device ID and being able to see number of devices you have and track label, all that would remain the same. Now, uh, so this is before we discuss any APIs. Is this doable? Uh, is there's a, a browser? Uh, browsers could figure out basically. There's a semantic difference here between an initial permission prompt, a cold, cold prompt basically, versus adding and changing to another device later. And the user agents may detect this solely from context, uh, whether they the site already has permission or has an existing live track. <coughs> And they could change the wording from uh, the slides. I don't know if you've seen the screenshots here, but uh, instead of share, you can say share another device or perhaps change based on your permission model. Because now on the second, on the second prompt like this, it's less about if you already have if the site already has permission, it's not really about permission, but more about choosing another device. And that means uh, the browser might want to have a more benign cancel option out of this dialogue instead of the you know get lost deny option that might block permission. Um, and um, basically, you could have choices or whether to have mask grid previews or not. And again, the default choice could be passed in by the app. So next slide. So here's to the PR that uh, was proposed last um, meeting. Uh, it has uh, a, one problem with it, but I'll go through it uh, again. And that is to mandate in Chrome Gum selector, a la Firefoxes, when and only when a user, we find a user has multiple devices and the constraints don't reduce choices down to one. This basically removes the user agent as a decision maker in which device to pick. Unfortunately, uh, this may over prompt uh, there's some backwards compatibility issues where we find existing code is calling get user media way too often. Um, for like unmuting cameras and microphones, but also we have cases uh, we saw recently where <clears throat> uh, the JavaScript code was basically calling get user media because um, coming out of the okay of the settings dialog, it would just call get user media again with what you already had selected, stuff like that. But I would still argue most users would not notice a change because they either only have a single camera or the website is using uh, exact facing mode to pick a front versus back camera. <clears throat> but the idea is that uh, it changes the get user media and that you can say, uh, please give me a camera microphone that the user has chosen. So if there's more than one, prompt the user in that case. Uh, so, and it, it relies on that when you're calling get user media, you're really resolving two things, uh, permissions, and orthogonally uh, device selection. So let me go through the slides and uh, we can take a discussion at the end. So next slide. So um, this is the PR again, and it basically, the it's not a lot of spec change, uh, but w there's basically two, the permission spec has two um, algorithms and one is called request permission to use which is actually designed for a sole device. And I caught that when I changed the text here, actually fixes a bug that the text I removed used to say, in order to report per device permissions, which no browser supports yet, um, the old text is actually wrong to call request permission to use without knowing which device it is. So if you see in the red text, it says, it used to say, considers device ID member set to any appropriate device, this device ID. So the new text now actually calls that algorithm correctly, uh, request permission to use. And the, the, the text change is basically if the number of unique devices sources sourcing tracks of media type kind is candidate, in candidate set is one, then set the device ID member and request permission to use the sole device. Otherwise, prompt the user to choose a device with the descriptor. The so prompt the user to choose is the second permission algorithm that we use in get display media. So this is existing language in the permission spec. So the context here is that it's always been the website's job to use constraints on device ID to manage a user's devices. 
when done correctly using the exact constraint, there would be no change in behavior. But um, there's a backward compatibility issue here with sites that might use an ideal device ID constraint on revisit. And that makes sense there because you're basically saying, I, I want to remember the user's camera from last visit, but they may have unplugged it now. So please don't fail the gum call. Like, you know, get the user's existing device if they have it. Otherwise, you know, just get what the user agent wants, the default choice. So that would be a problem for multi-device users only, and they might end up getting a picker every visit until the site updates to use exact. So that's not uh, perfect, has some issues. So I introduced a couple of alternatives. Next slide. The proposal B is basically add a new get me user media Boolean for this new A behavior. And it could be something like uh, you call navigator uh, get media devices, get user media, video true, and then chosen true, where chosen means track must be chosen by the user or application, not the user agent. This would apply to both audio and video if present. And I'm happy to bike share the name for that. So basically, this is the cop out where we believe this new behavior is the correct behavior, but it's not web compatible. So we put in a Boolean to pick. And proposal C is the same thing, just with a, a new method, uh, choose user media. And that avoids the Boolean arg, which I think uh, most spec people say, you know. Uh, you shouldn't have Booleans in your APIs, but it also feels like overkill when everything else is the same and might falsely suggest that there are more differences here than they are. Might actually lead to uh, more refinement, which can actually cause this idea to stall from a spec perspective. So um, next slide. We can come back to this and actually discuss, but I want to just show that. So how in content, Device selection could now be replaced by in-crum selection with code like this on button click. If you have more than one device of that kind, then you pass in constraints to pass in maybe the existing device and you set chosen true. And then you basically call gut, uh, gum again and you would get a selector. Uh, next slide. And so it would solve all four issues that I mentioned. Uh, it would let us put device ID, uh, enumerate devices labeled behind gum permission and eventually kill it. It would give browsers, actually applications, the choice up front whether they prefer a picker or not in all browsers. It would work compatibly against all browsers. Um, it would, there would be no need for this default device ID that I spoke of earlier, uh, provided that Firefox gives up its current uh, camera and microphone picker, but it's false, and that would give more consistent behavior uh, across browsers. And the last one is this model no longer requires mass permission and browsers can handle previews and tricky platforms. So you, you get uh, overall better cross browser experience uh, uh, and compatibility. And I think that was all the slides. So uh, maybe we can go back to the slide that had proposals um, B and C. Can you go back a couple? Um, quick, quick question, Yonivar. Um, yeah. So initially you said that the ping, ping working group was uh, for the disclosure of only uh, the device that the user granted access to. Uh -huh. And it, it seems yeah. that in your proposal, um, in fact, the web application gets knowledge of all the devices and all their capacities except the label. Right, but but to be clear, I, I still think it might be an issue for the ping work group. They will see that it's a benefit because the label will not be there, but right. there will still be that issue, right? Well, th I think the more important point here is that this is um, this is trying to outline how in Chrome device selection could work, and that gives us an avenue that opens a path to privacy. We now have choices. If we want, we can limit more information. Uh, the only issue they filed was on the label. So if they want to limit more information, we now have an avenue that, where we can do that because we can ask the user uh, these, uh, this information without involving JavaScript and having JavaScript have the responsibility of building a picker. Uh -huh. 
Um, just for context, can you restate like what's the privacy issue with device ID versus the privacy issue with device label? Just to make sure I'm on the same page. Anyone else? Is that a question for me or for you, Ann? Uh Anyone who feels like they have a good answer. Well, um, I think that I can answer label was that um, the idea was that this was too much information, not just about fingerprinting, but what the user actually owns and has. You, they might have uh -huh. proprietary devices. They might have uh, un, you know, unsuitable devices that they're ashamed of having. Um, the label is devices. the human readable string, right? And device yeah. ID is just a random-ish identifier, right? Yeah. Right. But but this is this is information about the user beyond fingerprint, and that I don't know if you live in the U.S. You probably get these spam mailers sometimes, like you know your your insert make of your car is is in need of more insurance or something. Your insurance is going to expire. And the more information you have about a user, the more you can trick them with phishing and that kind of stuff. They could say your camera needs to update its driver for your know, your Logitech Brio camera driver is outdated. Click here to download and install the driver, stuff like that. But, so. but pro probably you can get the label from uh, the device info as well. Like, oh, the resolution is that and that and it's supported that and that. So it's probably the Logitech Brio. So you, you could probably infer that. So that's yes, it. but uh, the, the ping here didn't want to outlaw label entirely, but only for the devices that were not clearly chosen uh, by the user. And I think that's also where we have a problem where in the many of the prompts, but one Today, question. Uh, yeah. The concern is the device chosen by the user or authorized by the user? Well, if you're cl t claiming that users understand that when they say they want to use your camera, that you just gave permission to all their cameras, uh, I would challenge that. I think uh, that's true in all browsers except Firefox at the moment. It says, it's as far as the user understands, they want to use one camera and you get permission to all. So I think the intent there is to not be surprising and make sure you have consent from the user. And I'm not sure that counts as consent to all devices. I think there are some new cameras that kind of make that even more surprising. I see that there are mobile phones with infrared front cameras on them at the moment. So right. which users may not even be aware they exist, let alone they're certainly not giving permission to, be, to access them, I wouldn't have thought. Right. Yeah, that that's been kind of weird us uh, because at at one point we made those available and then we decided it wasn't such a great idea. It's yeah. true that uh, so, the browser is also able to actually uh, sanitize the labels, for instance, uh, yes. or allow the user to uh, sanitize the labels mm -hmm. as much as it wants. Yes. So I don't think the the I, I could be misreading the ping, but I I didn't take their concern to be. <clears throat> My interpretation of it wasn't so much that the, the spec allows browsers to make poor privacy choices, but so much that the spec seems to uh, prevent or make it really hard to make browsers that make better choices. Hmm. Because right now, the, the exposure of label is required to build an in-content device selector that's competitive. Right. Uh, so we're, we're, my, my biggest concern about uh, Getting to getting from where we are to the place where, where we want to want to be is really that uh, we need to find a way that we can not break existing applications. So I kind of liked uh, uh, versions uh, B and C in that for existing applications where the user grants permission to all cameras and all microphones and therefore has the la the label has uh, has been revealed to them then uh, it would work just as before and uh, right if you want to do something something more privacy respecting then you can do that and i kind of like that uh, approach hmm. And then we can, uh, at a later stage, when we have proven that uh, that the new approach is viable for for real applications, then we can we can move to saying that we could depre deprecate the old way or make uh, the old way more painful for applications. 
I mean, yeah, it, I, it, I, in, the, in the Chrome, device selection in Chrome, like five, six years ago. And uh, when applications tried to use that, they begged us for, in the in application uh, device selection, and that's where Enumerate Devices was born. It was, right. it, it, it was based on a previous failure. So I don't want to break things again. I think if yeah, we I th have uh, if we have the in Chrome picker, the, um, I think I think there's no longer a need for for any of the old ways. Um, and like it seems, it seems to be the preferred. Like if both APIs existed, it would seem like the preferred API to go with. Mm -hmm. Um, but it also, if it's a separate API, um, the downside would be that unless people are updating their code, right? Like, like you, basically, we have this privacy issue, and by having a, a, a boolean or a new API, you make you make you make uh, using uh, something that's good for privacy optional. In yeah. the meantime, we, I mean, it might be fine in the meantime, but. Uh, if so, the the long term plan should still be to deprecate the old way, if we if we care about privacy. Yeah, yeah the thing is I, that uh, I mean, not doing it that way I mean, would break the web, basically. Uh, so I know I know that, for example, Hangouts I have used it. I mean, well, debugging it, I know that it makes like sixteen get user media calls, yeah, <laughs> just just to, to to prompt you something, just just before. So if you get sixteen. Let's say uh, I don't know exactly uh, why they do all that and and uh, how do that, but but uh, but all that stuff relies on the fact that once they get authorization, they can make the calls all the time, and 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 the user doesn't have to constantly choose what what device to use for each get user media call. Uh, so so things like that would be completely broken if we don't allow the existing promptless way to to continue to work it, it uh, seems like a good approach like if we if we ship the good way of doing things where we're clear about like everyone actually implements the same thing and it's good for both privacy and, and usability and, and compatibility uh, if we get to the point where the new way is clearly superior um and then the old way like the thing about deprecating the old way is is uh, it's it's still gonna work. It's just gonna that you're gonna get spammed by prompts, right? Like you can you can deprecate it by just always prompting. Uh, so it wouldn't completely break things. It would just be a a, a bad user experience. But at that point, that's, that's breaking the web. Basically, yeah, no, yeah. So that's don't why break the whole business we we want to avoid that. that. We want to avoid that, right? Like we definitely don't want to ship something where <laughs> suddenly you get prompted all the time and there's no way to get around it. But if there is if there is a viable option that's you know one line code line away, uh, at that point it might be feasible to make the old way more promptly. Do, do, do we have uh, any... Do the, do the kind of first. Yeah, Yadiva, do you have any idea on how many sites or apps use uh, in-browser picker? I mean, I, I'm asking you because since Firefox is using a different model, you might have better picture on what's broken in Firefox. Well, this is the other problem with Firefox's picker uh, that it only, it's not a reliable device picker by any means because it only appears if you don't have permission so as soon as you remember this permission uh, you don't get the picker anymore so the underlying model is, is at that point where it's the same as any other browser right so, so uh, this would be a change um so talking about web compat um firefox already sees a website extra prompts it's a big concern for us that uh, if people use like you mentioned google meet and hangouts you get a prompt for camera and then you get another prompt for microphone. That's one thing, but also other sites like whereby they had uh, they've fixed it now. But it used to be you went into when well, you first got your initial prompt for camera and microphone. Uh, if that wasn't was wrong, and you wanted to change it, you go into settings, and you would pick camera, and it would prompt you. They fixed it now, said only prompts for camera, and then you, you change that. But then when you hit OK, you get a prompt again for a camera and microphone. So they fixed it now, but. 
there's a lot of gotchas web com compatibility wise that you run into because it's true, websites do seem to call get user media a lot. But with this PR proposal A, it would actually be slightly worse than what than what you could just see in Firefox because Firefox also has this behavior built in because of how we interpret it the spec, but mostly to to align with how websites were already using get user media that if you already have permission to attract and that track is one of the choice, potential choices in the prompt we want to show you, we skip the prompt. And we always give you that, that device. And that, that's, that was for web compatibility at the time. And also why you couldn't actually implement proposal A. Well, that's why proposal A doesn't already work in Firefox, to put it that way. Otherwise, this would actually work um, quite well. So that is the change that's being proposed. And uh, yeah, yeah. Is that so your question? If uh, I, I kind of think that we could market, I'm thinking marketing here, uh, propose right. C as uh, as uh, a means of saying, uh, saying here you can get to pick any device, and if you need permission from, then it will be combined with a picker. Mm -hmm. So, you, so that's that's a way to never get a permission prompt. You just get a picker. So, so I, I'm interested in proposal C, that if we're able basically to reduce a lot, not only labels but all the device info, uh, and that's the thing that I'm unclear about is uh, how how far can we get there? So it would be nice to to see how much applications need to provide uh, constraints. And if they need to provide constraints, that they probably need to discover the values they can set and, and so on, which is a fingerprinting issue. And uh, I guess in Chrome, uh, selection might help a little bit in removing that, but I'm still not clear how much it can actually remove it. And if we are only able to remove just labels, for instance, then the cost of a new API and so on is very high for just right. labels. Well, I should clarify that there's very little difference between B and C here other than the API surface. So I don't want to imply. I worried about putting it on the slide because it does imply in sort of open-ended uh, down the road, uh, there'll be a separate method. So it'll nothing have nothing to do and we can totally redesign it. The intent was here that this is still the same and only get using media call you should be using in the future, really, or should need in the future. And uh, the only reason to call it the other way is, is if you want the user agent's great wisdom in choosing uh, what should be used, which is a web compat compatibility issue a little bit. But I could see why. Uh, so would, uh, would choose user media uh, only by only giving permission to a specific device, not expose any information about like no labels, no device uh, ID, no nothing, because there's no reason to for the application to know it because it's not involved in. Uh, that's, that's not really true. Um, in case of an of some kind of error, I think you do want to know the device uh, the device label, so you can keep track of what's what device kind of devices are having problems. Right. Well, so, but, but only for the uh, the one that you granted permission to. Right, or would enumerate devices give you the list of all labels? Well, so, in, in this case, I think no, right? So uh, again, proposal C was only meant as an API surface variant of the same behavior as proposal B, unless someone is proposing something, uh, something uh, else. Um, I assume it's the same thing. Yes, so in that case, the only difference here I, I was trying to make it a, an issue that doesn't really address device ID or the other device info information. I think that's an orthogonal, orthogonal question. Um, I'm not personally of the opinion that exposing device IDs in this context where you already have permission, uh, you know, I, I think that's completely orthogonal basically, basically to how yeah, you uh, devices. You and I, I'm not actually trying to understand your, your point there. You, you think that once you've granted permission, you sh still should not have access to the device information? Um, so I think the ping working group would say that uh, if you grant access to one camera, why should you know that there's another camera somewhere else and what the capacities of the other camera are? Um, probably you should not right. be able to 
to have that. The web page should not have that. The thing where we right. probably did say that. And, well, that, and that that's, that's, my... that's where we, we need to understand um, if it's true, if there are cases where it's actually useful for the web page to actually know that there are other cameras, probably it is, but how much is it important or, or not? Can we solve uh, all these scenarios in different ways or, or not? Um, well, I hesitate to spec. Uh, to, uh, that's going further than the, this PR is going, and I hesitate to speculate. I don't want to speculate about what the ping would or wouldn't want. The only issue that they've filed their language so far is about the label, and it says the site gains access only to the device and label of the hardware the user selects. So, so, so we should uh, first clarify with the ping workload then, because well, uh, we I mean, uh, I, I don't think we need uh, no. Ping to say what's, I mean, if we think this would be a privacy improvement that we want to make, we don't need the ping blessing to, to do it. So, but, but, but I, I'm trying to assess how much of it is indeed orthogonal to that discussion or not. Like, can we do this first bit and then uh, explore right. if it gets us additional privacy benefits? Or uh, as you were putting it, you and it's not worth it unless it brings additional privacy benefits. I don't think like I don't think you need to decide like this is sort of like one step and you you can take one step without taking a second step but but I do think the related steps right like because if you if you make it obsolete to for an application to handle device selection then suddenly why would you need all these these labels so it's it is relevant but we don't have to do both things at the same time but it's okay. worth discussing yeah, we have to understand whether we'll be able to get there or not. Uh, that, that's the thing I'm worried. If we're if we're stuck in the middle, uh, I, I'm not sure I want to implement it. If we're able to go further, then it it really gets me uh, interested. Yeah, okay. I, I would I would echo that. Well, the, uh, there was a slide on transition. Whether you know we right. could do a two step. There's some concerns here. Web compatibility is one, and how far we want to go. Um, so getting rid of the label, putting it behind gun permission, that's more of a token um, solution. Um, and that would only break Firefox's in content device selector. Um, but, and I think uh, the goal would be to, uh, if we want to deprecate in content device selection, you don't need label and enumerate devices. I think the only thing you would probably still want in enumerate devices is to learn how many devices what you do need is, does the user have more than one device, right? Because if they only have one device, you don't want to, don't even want to have a button to bring up a picker because it's... it depends. You, you can have a change uh, source <coughs> API that would return nothing if there's no no more API or something like that. Right, right. Once you rent it, so we, we could find other ways, I guess. Mm -hmm. right. So um, could we go further and remove that information as well? Sure. Yes, we could do that. Uh, but yeah, I think that's, a, that's a, uh, but I, I still think that we should be able to take one step without committing to three, but uh, I'm happy to consider two, <laughs> if that makes sense. But uh, what if we focus all the permission authorization things in enumerate devices rather than with user media, since that's the actual problematic API with being the, it's enumerate devices, not with user media. So. Well, well enumerate devices might be uh, called before get user media. At least it was in the past. It's I mean, if, if you eliminate content uh, device selection, yes, get enumerate devices is is uh, probably redundant. Well, enumerate devices, the way we've changed it in the spec lately, it, it's there to to assist JavaScript to build a picker. Right. So, if we remove that task from JavaScript we remove the need for enumerate devices labels and uh, probably any other information that isn't necessary to accept maybe the number of devices. So um, I don't think that, I think it would be really hard for users to understand that they give permission to enumerate their devices. I don't think that's uh, right. Yeah. I don't think that's a prompt that people would understand. Well, not, well, not, not, that the, not, not, not necessarily that the, this, the permission is to enumerate devices. You give permission to devices, but you, uh, I mean, we, uh, we, 
put the I mean, we, we could implement things such that it's uh, enumerate devices, the API you get, you use to get permission. Could be, well, I don't know. Yeah, I'm just well, thinking out loud. <laughs> okay, I think the spec has already done that because um, enumerate devices in the spec is basically neutered until you have gun permission at this yeah. point. Yeah, right. so what, what, what websites do is that they call get user media, then they call enumerate devices, and then they call get user media again. Right. Which is okay. Right. In most cases, the second call will not be needed because they will, the website will see that yeah, they picked the right device anyway. Right. But but it sounds like there's really no opposition to doing some of these. So I'm related to if if the vendors are uh, willing to commit to to building an an in Chrome uh, uh, device selector. So um, I think that's the main win. So I think it, formally, I think it. I, I think it, we might we might uh, call this uh, this an extension, saying that this this is a this is an, an API extension that requires uh, an in Chrome device selector in order to be compliant. Yeah. And... And and I, think, the, I think there's no opposition to that. You, you mean you an extension What? Yeah. yeah, BRC, yeah. Yeah. yeah, yeah BRC, yes, excuse, yeah, excuse. I guess BRC would require the selector, whereas the regular get user media would allow it, but not, not necessarily require it. Uh, I have a slight, very slight objection to C in that we're kind of forgetting that permissions, it's not just media permissions, but we're also actually giving um, local IP address permissions as a side effect of this. And once you start, like we've got it into our heads that that's now associated with get user media and however unsatisfactory that is. But if we now have it associated with two separate calls as well, this gets right. even harder to explain to anybody. Yeah. Yeah. It's, uh... Yeah, that's, that's why I call it. I uh, wanted to model it as a as a permission. Yeah, I, I think uh, if I were to pick myself, I think I would pick. Um, I, well, I don't think A is going to fly, so I think I would pick B. And I like what um, what Henrik said about that. You know, this would allow people to opt in, and we could change the default behavior and change it to an opt out over time. That's something what we did for, uh, I, I know Chrome did for uh, SDP semantics, for example. Hmm. So, so just to be clear, um, the goal there would be to, to build a new API or an extension API that would be uh, more privacy uh, uh, controlled. And in the meantime, we would go with the current media capture spec in CR and in PR uh, with uh, the current model is that correct well if you're asking me i would prefer that it was not an extension spec and then we got it into me right later. right because there's work that the vendors would have to do but there's very little work uh, in the actual spec i don't know that we need an extension spec to change a couple of lines well uh, but, uh, this is an extended extended kind of an effort though right i mean it would delay yeah, so delay so, PR for a while the, the question is uh, yeah, fr from a purely process perspective, again, if we think the current get user media as is, is going to remain as is and is implemented correctly, then there is no reason to delay that uh, forever or at least until that uh, extension is applied. Uh, but there may be changes needed for the extension in the ways uh, labels get granted permission that would need to be implemented at the same time that, that i'm unclear about if we if we don't change the main spec but instead add an extension spec doesn't that mean that we doom the main spec from from completing the privacy review and right. then we have this and then we by having an extension spec um well, less attention to it, I guess, for because we do want it implemented as well. Yeah, 
I mean, well, my, my, my problem is I think I'm concerned about either direction because currently we're, you know, the ping folks are getting antsy. If we tell them, hey, we're not changing this, they're likely to get even more antsy. Uh, but on the other hand, if we do change it, we, we draw out the PR process for God knows how long. So I don't know. It's it's kind of either way. It's like somebody's so, going to be. Uh, I think. I mean, the the real question I think is uh, the best we are providing here is an optional privacy announcement, whether that's defined in the same spec or in a different spec. I think mm. is uh, largely, not completely, but largely uh, irrelevant to what the ping would say. Um, <clears throat> Because in practice, if you know you can still do the bad privacy thing, uh, bad people will keep doing the bad privacy right. thing. Um, so, yeah, I, I think what we need to consider is uh, the overall impact of proposal B or C on the current spec. If it can be done as an extension spec, then that sounds more logical. If it can't, then it can't. Uh, that's, uh, so we have ideas for fixing the privacy stuff, and if we want to go through the privacy review and, and actually pass it, then then the privacy aspects that they need to be mandatory, not not optional. So I think right, that right. we're uh, assuming we're gonna do this, then 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 at some point the current stuff will be removed. So it's just a matter right. of how can yeah. we ship yeah. this in a way that that doesn't break stuff too much. So, and, and I agree with that. And also, the, the linchpin here is not the extra chosen Boolean option. The linchpin is removing the label from right. the license. I'm not and sure that's about that. the that's change, pass, right? That's how you pass ping review, not by. I'm, I'm not sure about that. They, they were not happy with just the, the number of devices. So. Uh, after after gun permission. Uh, after or before they, by by design they would. If the web page does not need to have this information, it should not have right. it. But the spec That's already good. says that you cannot get device numbers uh, before gun permission. And it's the same for labels. Sorry? And and it's the same for labels. You cannot have labels right. before. Yeah. And so, and they, they disagree with uh, with that. And they will disagree about the fact that uh, the web page knows that you have two cameras, while only one was actually granted. But, so, but they don't in the spec. You cannot learn that uh, until you have permission from at least one camera. Right. So I think we're good there. So the remaining so, issue is. I, mean, I, I just want to say I, I don't think our goal should be to pass ping review. Our goal should be to do a, a good spec, uh, and by good yeah. we also include uh, privacy respectful <laughs> specification. Uh, <clears throat> and the ping help us get there. Uh, they may help us by agreeing or disagreeing with us, uh, but ultimately we have to pick what we want to do. Uh, the well, ping can yeah. only give advice. Uh, uh, I would personally. Yeah, I would personally like that uh, we, we fix as much as we can with the current model. And uh, we, we try to move forward with that as, as a PR and a recommendation. And we also work in parallel uh, to a new model. And we, we take the time to do the new model. And it, it will take quite some time. It's, uh, it's, not a, it's not a few lines of code. It's not a few lines in the spec. We, we need to have a lot of code there. And it's good that we can start both together. But uh, I would still like that we, we do both in parallel. So, you, you and can you clarify what it would mean? What, what changes would be brought to the current get user media spec to get us right. to PR in a private? Um, basically, we would restrict um, media device info to only the types that are uh, sh um, granted. So, if you grant camera access, you grant access to all the information of the cameras, but not the information of the microphone, for instance. We, we could do some uh, additional improvement there without changing the model of the spec. Mm. Um, well, and we can try to uh, pass the ping review with that and push it to, to recommendation. And in parallel, we start now on uh, fi figuring out the right model that we should have done from the start. The, the problem I have with that is that it would have no privacy benefit in any browser other than Firefox. And it would basically hamper in, device, uh, in content device selection only in Firefox. So it's kind of a non-starter for us. So I'm not sure to understand how uh, 
Well, the fact if that we, we go, <laughs> if we go back to the slide where um, uh, they had the solution, if you go up uh, to slide ten. <clears throat> Uh, I can't see the numbers, so you'll have to oh, tell me uh, to stop. Sorry, go down. Go down. Uh, sorry. Um, oh, it's the one with issue 640 on it. Yeah, issue 640. Six. There, yes. So if we only remove label, this is what device selection would look like in Firefox, and uh, other browsers would be OK. And that just that wouldn't be good but, uh, for us. No, we, we would not do that either. So, so and I'm still of the opinion that um, if we look at what Mozilla would have to do to uh, implement this chosen Boolean, we could actually, we're actually pretty close. We already have an in, in device picker. The only problem with it is that in the case where you already have permission to one of the choices, we bypass the prompt. So if chosen true is uh, present, we would not uh, bypass the prompt. And that means that in Firefox, pretty soon, you could do in Chrome device selection. And so you would have one implementation, basically, already for very little work. I, I, under, I appreciate that other vendors would need more time to build. And we also have an issue where or that's already true. If you, in the current in content selection, we have a bug, if you will, that if you already have one camera and you go and you pick a different camera, and then you you hit disallow. You might accidentally now, you know, remove permission. So this uh, the language that I proposed in one of these slides that you know you should probably have a benign cancel button out of this uh, because the, the the semantic context is slightly different. You're you're picking additional cameras. You don't mean to. You shouldn't be revoking uh, permission for the thing you had before. So, so look, looking, at, looking at the time, we got ten minutes. Right. And, uh, I think we have uh, more or less uh, a path forward on this issue. Um, what I've noted, because I'm not really sure about the deal, what I noted is that we have uh, concerns with compatibility the issues for proposal A, but we have interest for proposal B or C. I have not right. like concluded which like decision. Uh, but I don't think we're there, there yet. I think, is that enough to note for the... So I'm actually not clear what the pass forward is because I'm hearing uh, Yaniva saying we should do this so, uh, now. Uh, I'm hearing you and say uh, we should do it later and uh, bake in some small changes in the current stuff. So, so, so I have a question. So it's Pink's intention to disallow in content device selection? Well, no. I, I think they they want the possibility of a privacy by default flow. Because right now the spec... Okay, but having the possibility of a privacy by default flow, well, that, that, that's a different thing. Well, it says... What, what they outline is basically site ask for category of device uh -huh. and browser prompt for user for one or many. And site gains access only to that device and label, so that's that's what they want. Right, and you can't you can't really get that without in Chrome. Yes, so this would provide the possibility for the spec would allow a browser vendor to implement that. Right now, the spec does not allow the browser vendor to do that because of the way, unfortunately, Get User Media has been. Uh, been it's actually not even specified, but how it's been implemented in a way that's not web compatible if you were to do that. My impression was not, not only that they want to enable as a, a, a privacy by default flow, but I think they want to disallow uh, uh, non-privacy by default flow, or, or at yeah, least... I, I don't, but my concern with that is that that basically breaks the web. Yeah, so that's the problem. <laughs> um, they, they, they want us to change the model, which is, which so, is good. So yeah, I mean, if you, if you, you can... You can make everything super private by making it useless. So, no, but, but I think there is a timing question. Like, they, if you don't have a privacy by default flow, then there is no way you can deprecate over time the privacy harmful way. Right. Yeah, right. I, I would like to see oh. like an an opt in where we we no. have a privacy by default flow, and then we we try to deprecate the old way of doing things. 
even if that I, I, I don't think we can ever defre- I, I think it would take a long time to to actually deprecate the old way of doing things but having a, a by default that with options B and C it's pretty viable in a relatively short time yeah. but but uh, but the protecting the old ways yeah, that is would be very long. it means breaking the right. web basically. yeah that's that would be very uh, yeah. long thing. At, at some, the problem is though right we're talking about bad actors this there's the people who are trying to write legitimate apps right who can transition bad actors won't transition unless uh, you know you have to take their their goodies away well it, it's not necessarily bad to call it the old way it just means that you you're asking the user agent to resolve this question uh, i think that the, the the reason I think it needs to be in the main spec is because this is actually ambiguous in the spec right now. The way it's been implemented uh, isn't actually spelled out. That uh, it kind of says that assume that if for a track that uh, already is live, assume it already has permission. But it doesn't say anything about what, if the application constraints don't narrow down to one. It doesn't say that you must pick that one again as a user agent. We just happen to do that because that's what people expected on the web. And it would to avoid breaking uh, sites. Uh, but arguably, Yaniva, that, that could be a, a clarification that is made without having proposal A, B, or C. I mean, I, I take your point that mm. the spec is not perfect for the, the points you point out, but that doesn't imply it needs also the addition before we can. Uh, so to clarify, would we need two implementations to? Yes. For this, right. Mm. So I, I've noted that uh, I have, like there's interest in B or C, but there's difference in opinion about the exact path forward. And more discussion is needed. Uh, should we should we end it at, at more discussion is needed, or uh, and give around the five minutes? Yeah, I don't think we're going to get all the way there today. So, all right. So, are there any next steps on this one? You need a pro- to pro- to make a specific proposal. Yeah, I think I'm gonna. Um, I can mock up a B. Uh, that's my favorite. Unless someone uh, disagrees, I, I'd like to maybe even do a, a version in Firefox of that. Okay. So for, just for a quick check, the, the other implementers would indeed consider doing a, a picker in a, an in Chrome picker device picker. Uh, I would have to, I, I would have to get that uh, that discussion yeah. internally. Yeah, yeah. yeah I, there are arguments in favor. It, it's so way too early for 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 having a Safari position. We would need to assess whether we can get rid of all internet devices. Leakage. Yeah, and if if we can do that, then I'm pretty sure we we would try to implement the picker, and then if we are happy with the picker, we would. Uh, we would implement it for yeah. Okay, thanks. That's a very useful info. So, um, what do we want to do now? Um, good question. Uh, I don't know if that we have time to go through the other issues that I had. Um, do you want to wanna... let Harold do his extension yeah. thing? Yeah, let's do that. Okay, Harold, you have the floor. Okay, flip to flip to it. Yeah, so. If you ever looked at STP, you've noticed this section with RTP header extensions and A equals XMAP number URL. And these uh, things have been breathing like rabbits. As you can tell from the names, they're not all standards even, they're experiments or drafts or whatever. And uh, it turns out that we get certain problems when there are too many of them. So if you fire, uh, if you have more than 14, you need something called two byte numbers to enumerate them. And it turns out that some partials have problems with two byte numbers. And uh, one of those being uh, Chrome 71, which is still 1% of the web. Uh, so uh, they, they also create overhead. So we'd like to both control uh, what the, uh, 
Uh, we'd like to con control both what's the, what gets sent and received in STP so that we can not offer things that no, don't make sense in certain contexts or even remove stuff that makes trouble. And the other thing is that once we have negotiated that it's possible to use these beasts, then uh, it turns out that sometimes we have su support for two or three different ways of doing the same thing. And uh, the app has an opinion of which one should actually be turned on. So, next slide. So, I had a little discussion about with a guy who, uh, who had the problem internally and came up with an API proposal. Uh, for controlling negotiation, uh, I mean, if it touches SDP, I like to attach it to the transceiver because the transceiver is where everything that's weird uh, because of SDP lives. So we can do something like set codec preferences that, set, uh, that controls what gets offered or accepted in an, in an offer answer exchange. And then we could once we have negotiated support for something so that we know that, know that the other party will not die horribly if we send it, we can add the control for the RTP sender for saying, yes, use this or don't use this. And, uh, and the thing that goes on the sender should not be very powerful. In particular, it shouldn't be allowed to change numbers or add new extensions. That's done by negotiation. But uh, it needs to say, OK, use this, don't use this. And if the user tries anything else, it is to just say, bang. So I made a detailed proposal. And uh, I've gotten. A few comments from UN and Bernard, at least, that uh, have been helpful. And if the working group doesn't horribly object, I'd like to uh, make a PR on the WebRTC extension spec. We're not adding anything more that to WebRTC BSC at this stage. And ask for approval to merge. So that's the quick presentation. Questions, comments? Uh, just a comment from me, Harold. I think it's overall, I think your proposal is a good idea. The only thing I will say is having uh, worked on an implementation of this, uh, it is quite tricky to validate the header extension information. As an example, there may be some extensions you shouldn't be able to remove, like the mid header extension. So that I think is the one thing we need to work on a little bit more as to understand exactly what the validation steps are. Uh, but in general, I think your proposal makes sense to me, at least. Yeah, yeah uh, I agree. I think I think there is a need for this, and I think like just looking at this, I, I also looked at the detailed proposal. I, I think it all makes sense. Uh, we just need to flesh out some details, uh, but but we should we should uh, uh, proceed. Yeah, me too. I, I like. To okay. I have a to move on with dissenting a view, which is that I feel that. Um, might encourage the behavior that's the rabbit breeding behavior. Um, if you're making more <laughs> rabbit breeding possible, then I, you're just going to encourage it. Yeah, and I'm not I'm sure not that's something we want. I'm kind of channeling Ned Fried here. This is not uh, not uh, starting down the slippery slope. This is how far we slide into the muck at the bottom. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, the, the rabbits are rabbits will continue to breed, I think, regardless of what we do. Yeah, and uh, I, I kind of uh, agree with the fear. The last thing about the API, uh, about the, an API like this, is that adding support for RTP extensions from JavaScript is currently impossible, and I hope we can keep it that way. I'm not sure we can, but it's a hope. Right, right. 
Yeah, I mean, we did consider this originally, but the, the validation thing, I think, was one reason why we made it read only. Mm. So. Uh, in terms of preventing rabbits from from uh, breeding, I think I think we should have a stronger policy for like, origin trials, or, or maybe uh, reviewing the extension RTP extensions, and making sure browsers are on the same page about which which RTP header extensions to should be implemented. Uh, well, I mean, Henrik, we're the the rabbits are not only breeding in the ITF; they're breeding in AO Media and other places, so. It, it's kind of hard to stop them. <laughs> oh, yes. You not, noticed from the previous slide that uh, there were a number of prefixes on those uh, extensions. Yeah, I mean, as an example, we're, we're likely to have both frame, uh, frame marking and the new uh, descriptor format, which does some of the same things, both in there at the same time. And you probably don't want to do negotiate both of them. So. I kind of think this is going to be this is going to be needed, or even more chaos could break out. Okay, so I'll make I'll make a proposal, uh, pull request. Okay, thank you, Harold. Pleasure. Okay, I think we're over time. So uh, thank you, everybody, and I think we may need another session to finish everything that uh, we had on this agenda. Yes. Okay, see you next month. Okay, bye. -bye. See you next month. Bye. 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 bye.